Welcome to Wonder World, everyone. Uh, we're uh, sorry we're starting a bit later today. Had some uh, real world things that had to happen, people working, getting in late. Uh, so thank you for bearing with us. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then ignore this part. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so we're going to be playing uh, the Cypher system today, which those of you are not familiar with it, uh, is a system that's used in games like uh, Numenera and The Strange. Um, I'll do kind of a brief lead in kind of telling a bit about that, but we're all sort of still learning the system. So if you're really familiar with Cypher and like know the rules really well, just bear with us because None of us know the rules, and we're just going to kind of stumble through this today. Uh, but it'll get better as we go. <laughs> uh, maybe. Yeah, Hopefully. Maybe. maybe. Uh, but this is my first time running a Cypher game. I'm super excited. I wanted to do this for a little for a while now, and I've really wanted to run, like, sci-fi superhero stuff. So also doing that. So new stuff all together as thunder roars in the background. Um, so the Cypher system is a D20-based system. If you're familiar with D20 systems, uh, it's pretty much going to be what you're used to. DM sets a difficulty, players roll a 20-sided die, meter exceed the number, you succeed. Uh, the difference here is that it's player-driven action. Players are going to make all the rolls. I make none of them. Uh, all I do is make up arbitrary numbers uh, dictating the difficulty of tasks. Uh, there's a lot of nitty-gritty and other rules that go into it about subtracting and reducing the difficulty of stuff. I could go into that, but I think we just kind of want to start the game. <laughs> so we'll kind of explain it as we go, mostly for our benefit, but also a little bit for figures as well. And uh, hopefully we'll all understand a little bit more about this game uh, when we're done here in a couple hours. So... Uh, I will go ahead and sort of introduce the the game itself, talk a bit, a little bit about, give my little spiel on, on what the setting is and the lore here, and then we will go ahead and jump in. So, the year is 2355, and the face of planet Earth is irrecognizable from her 21st century counterpart. 300 years have passed since the discovery of a mutation in the human genome in nearly one-third of the world's population, which heralded the advancement of the species and dubbed the eighth wonder of the world. Even more amazing was that 1% of this group uh, who had this mutation exhibited superhuman abilities, enhanced strength beyond genius levels of intelligence, psychokinetic powers, and um, I think just broke, uh, and more. The enhan these enhanced humans have been collo colloquially, I cannot speak today, referred to as eights. Uh, the marvels did not stop there. Study of these powers led to huge advancements in science, medicine, and technology. Hover tech, genetic enhancements, cellular regeneration, cybernetics, and AI all became possible through the study of AIDS. These advancements led to even more staggering shifts in world power as national borders and localized government weakened during the rise of corporate power. As a result, the nations of Earth united under one corporate entity, Earth's Incorporated Nations, or EIN. As Ein grew through its beneficial use of eight research, so too did criminal industry. And to combat this, Orlin Weber Sr., uh, president of Ein at the time, founded an association of powerful eights to fight for the benefit of peace across the world and throughout the many colonies spread throughout the solar system. This group was named the World Organization of National Danger Resistance, or WONDER. And where we will start here is our group, as we've discussed this previously, uh, they are operating or members of a local sect of wonder uh, located in Tokyo, Japan. Um, you, they all have their alter egos or other identities, their secrets, their backstories, which we will get into. But where we're going to start now is with uh, going through each one of our characters. Uh, I'd like each one of you to sort of give a uh, 
an explanation of your, your superhero identity, who you are when you're fighting crime, and then give an idea of or tell us what you're doing right now. What is your day-to-day -day job, your, your alter ego that uh, gets you through the minutia of, of daily life? And we're going to start with um, Savannah, also known as uh, Sarah Bellix. Should I say what my actual like class things are? Uh, I mean, you can. It's okay. It doesn't mean as much. Um, so maybe describing your character more might be more beneficial. Okay. Um, my superhero character is Sarah Bellix, um, who she has awesome empathic telepathic abilities. Um, she's really super cool. She dresses all in black leather and wears a hood and carries a whip. She's awesome. Um, my alter ego, I guess, is Dr. Charlotte Sadler, um, affectionately known as Dr. Charlie to her patients because she is a child psychiatrist by day. And so right now, what are you, where you set the scene for what you're doing currently? Um, well, if it's during the day, then Charlie um, or Dr. Sadler is at work in her office, um, probably with a patient. Okay. Doing uh, psychiatry things. <laughs> uh, with like the long sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The couches with the oh, like a chaise lounge. Yeah, it's like a more, big chaise well, lounge. Well, it's more fun than that. Um, okay, it's more. I think it's child psychology. Yeah, psychology, she's yeah. most of her patients are children and teens, and so I think her office is less of a like kind of paper pusher regular office. And I think there's a lot of fun stuff around. I think there's a lot of books. There's probably a lot of artwork on the walls. There's probably a corner with like toys and things like that. Magazines. Um, Okay. You know, things that kids like. <laughs> okay. Uh, so panning across the um, tall, kind of spiring towers of, of Tokyo and the whizzing of hover cars through the downtown area, we pan over to uh, Alex, also known as Machina. Uh, I am playing Machina, a mind with a fully automated ro robot body. Uh, by day, he is acting as a service droid, just doing any general odd jobs or tasks that are needed under the designation AI-791. Okay, so just sort of like lifting trash cans and picking up debris and like trash off the highway and things Anything like that. Anything people need him to do. Okay. Um, but different than, than most, you are like fully cognizant, unlike the other robots around your circle. Yeah, I'm unlike here. the sort of gen general droids, which you can just input and give instructions and they will do literally to the letter for better or worse. Uh, <clears throat> actually being able to think, um, Makina is able to do these tasks possibly to a better degree as he's able to think of the benefits or detriments of certain actions he performs. Okay. So hiding in plain sight. Basically. All right. Uh, so zooming away from our, from Machina doing his day-to-day -day activities, we uh, pan across the city over to uh, other <laughs> Alex, also known as uh, Accelerando. Yes, so Accelerando is a speedster, as the name may have given away. Um, and his alter ego is Steve Cargut, a mid-30s disgruntled pizza delivery driver who's always just a little late with the delivery. And he is currently stuck in Tokyo traffic. <laughs> I like it. So kind of like a Peter Parker-esque character, can't get his day-to-day -to -day life together, but... Yeah. All right, I like it. Um, and then as we pan away from the rush hour kind of gridlock traffic on the Tokyo freeways, uh, 
we, for the last time, pan across the city and flash over to uh, Kyle, uh, also known as Sentinel. Sentinel is in his garage at the moment. Uh, his full name is Griffin. Griffin something another because I'm weird and don't have his character sheet pulled up. Uh, Griffin McLaughlin. Uh, by day, he owns a car repair shop. He's a mechanic, for lack of a better word. Uh, his alter ego to that is Sentinel. Um, differentiating himself between everyone else, he himself doesn't think he has any super abilities. He's just a really, really good shot. And because he spent most of his youth in the military, he just assumed that that's what it's from. Not knowing that most people can't take the shots that he does and but that's fine with him. Okay, so his abilities might be a little more recessive, a little less obvious, but he yeah. has honed them from his time in the military. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, all of you taking your day-to-day -day actions, stuck in traffic, cleaning up trash in the city, uh, tending to the uh, needs of children and uh, fixing people's uh, vehicles. You all carry on you, or inside of you, in uh, some cases, a communicator device, um, which at this point, uh, at about middle of the afternoon, begins to buzz. And you all sort of sort of at the same with the split screen sort of view, uh, see all of you come to attention and notice uh, the communicator vibrating on the uh, table or in your pocket or wherever it might be. So my head's just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have like a, a, like a display pop-up uh, in that moment. And as you're kind of able to go around and inconspicuously do this, uh, you all see this, but we see it from the view of... Uh, of Machina, a message pops up at that time, and it reads, Local alert. Um, response needed at Tomai Expressway. Ein transport under attack. All right, is that, does that happen to be the expressway Accelerando is on currently? It actually, as you're as you're sitting there and sort of looking around, you see that you look up at the traffic, and it's kind of like, of course, uh, yeah. You currently like it's gridlocked for miles, and um, you can hear the distant sound of sirens at this point. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and set the car on autopilot because presumably they've gotten that figured out three hundred yeah. years into the future. <laughs> um, by the time we take care of this in traffic, it should make it to where I'm delivering the pizza. So <laughs> get it on autopilot, uh, dash out into an alleyway, change into costume, and start making my way towards the incident. Okay, so Accelerano, you sort of zip out of your car before anyone's even able to recognize that the door is opened, uh, off to the side, changing quickly, and then zooming down the freeway, finally moving at a decent speed. <laughs> Uh, Machina, as he's after he gets called, just begins to leave his job, and as he does, sort of the positions of his faceplate and parts of his body shift to better to his faceplate to sort of disguise himself uh, and his body uh, shifting plates to reveal uh, weaponry or to be better suited for a combat situation. Okay. As he begins to make his way immediately towards whatever this is all right so sort of transforming there for, <laughs> for a moment and then are you which uh which one are you in right now you're in um uh, it will just be the regular body right now okay yeah so in your kind of more aerodynamic more speed form you just doosh, 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 begin rushing down the street um leaping over a section of raised wall uh, towards the uh towards the freeway and kind of very quickly make your way that direction um Sarah Bellix and Sentinel. I uh, just poke my head out of the office and tell my receptionist to reschedule all my appointments for for the afternoon. <laughs> and then <laughs> the young, the young like uh, college student that's currently temping for you kind of looks. Uh, uh, what? What? 
I just run past her um, and go into the stairwell up to the roof. Change from my daytime power suit, my professional power suit, uh, into a very different kind of power suit and uh, take off flying. Okay, so uh, you rush up the stairs, sort of Superman style, like changing as you as you go, um, pulling up your hood. You stomp the ground, and whoosh, your hover boots kind of kick into effect, and you go zooming uh, across the skyline in the direction of the growing sirens. So, uh, hearing this. He looks over, <laughs> laughs to himself, uh, closes down his shop, you know, very slowly, just like every other day, goes into the elevator that's in the back of his uh, his shop, ascends to the roof as it opens up. He enters his fully formed armory, gathers his gear, you know, his, uh, uh, his jacket, his uh, flak vests, everything. Sean, did we create the cloaking device that he has or not because i know oh, yeah you've got it i just don't have okay thanks for it it works that's cool it works <laughs> okay um as he gathers all of his weapons and he is just weaponed up like firearms for days as he steps off onto the street he looks around you know presses a a button on like a wristwatch type of thing and as he's walking down the street just disappears into thin air okay yeah we'll say that it reduces the difficulty task of your uh, stealth checks by by two just made that up this Works game is me. amazing <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so as you all make your way across the city in your own uh fashions towards the side of the crash uh i'm gonna assume accelerando probably makes it there first uh given yep. who he is um accelerando you come racing up to the scene you see smoke pluming off the freeway in front of you cars that are uh crisscross angled stopped about a quarter of a mile away from the the side of this wreck uh, the sounds of the sirens are getting louder, but it seems like the police or the, the emergency responders haven't quite made it to the scene yet. Uh, and you, do, there's no sounds of, of gunfire or any sort of conflict right now, but you see uh, probably about six or seven bodies uh, lying on the freeway and this large uh, hover transport, this hover freight in the center that's careened to one side with a large section of the back that looks like it's been ripped off um, and it looks empty. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, while I wait for the rest of the team, I'm going to check. Um, I'll quickly check the bodies, see if any of them are still alive, if they need aid. Basically, I'm going to try and triage civilians until the rest of the team shows up. Okay. Um, yeah, there are a few civilians around that looked like in whatever sort of, they look like there have been some explosions here uh, mm -hmm. that are in their vehicles. Most of them look like they're okay, that, you know, some shrapnel, some minor cuts, bruising, maybe a minor concussion. Uh, none of them too bad. Over near as you zip around, tending to people in quick succession, seeing how they are, uh, you do see that the bodies closest to the freight are... Uh, there are four of them that look that are wearing um, black uniforms uh, that have the Ein uh, logo on it. Um, they look like Ein guards mm -hmm. or um, military. And there are five or six other figures lying around that are all wearing white hazmat suits. Um, they look like they've suffered gunshots and, and been killed. Uh, you do notice that the bodies of the guards are a little bit uh, disconcerting as you as you go up. Um, they all, all their skin is like this bright green color. And the, the whites of their eyes are the same as they're kind of looking up uh, towards the sky, having just keeled over. We don't see any gunshot wounds or anything on them, but green skin and the whites of their eyes are turning green as well. Uh, at which point, as you're inspecting all this, you hear a 
thum, 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 as Machina comes whoosh, whoosh, uh, leaping down into the middle of everything. Full on superhero landing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in quick succession, Machina arrives. Uh, uh, Cel- uh, Cerebellix <laughs> I almost called you Cerebrix again uh, <laughs> this isn't a pharmaceutical <laughs> commercial uh, you <laughs> that's you my come, day job <laughs> Yeah, uh, you come hovering uh, over and kind of gliding down to the center of everything and Sentinel you approach the scene as well in your cloaked he's state. actually further away because he's a sniper okay. so yeah. he's he's you back but, but, he's, but he's in contact with everyone yeah, so comes over the communicator, um, all of you guys in, in each other's vicinity now. Hello, boys. <clears throat> hey, everyone. Looks like we've got transport team out of commission. The hazmat guys look like they got shot, and these guys look like they're sick or something. I don't know what's going on there. That's not my realm of experience, expertise. Let me take a look. Can I... Um... What is my ability that I have? So uh, probably be, what are you trying to do? Well, I wanted to use uh, scan, uh, which is an ability that I have. Um, yes, it is. It's uh, in a 10 foot cube, I think, um, mm-hmm. including all objects or creatures within that area in short range. Um, it reveals their level how powerful dangerous they are and whatever facts the gm feels are pertinent about the matter and energy in the area okay yeah um so you come hovering over the scene and there's a sort of sensor like vision that you get as everything becomes illuminated uh, using your um empathetic abilities empathic abilities to uh, gauge what happened here and you almost see like a brief sort of five second um, like hologram almost of things sort of reconstructing themselves and seeing things moving. Um, what you, let's see, what you see here is, and you get the idea that these men in the white hazmat suits, um, ambushed this freight, um, you see a couple of spent sort of grenade casings on the ground. Uh, they don't look like they've exploded, uh, but you get the idea that these are, you see them and you, re- you register from them is that they are gas canisters. Um, and you get the idea that these guards have been poisoned. Are they dead? Uh, well, you do register one very faint life sign coming from the other side of the truck. Uh, one of the guards um, who, Accelerandos, you've been kind of zip, zipping around. You didn't quite make out the very subtle movements, uh, but it's just right on the brink of death. While they're doing that, can I use one of my intellect points to go on Overwatch? Okay. Um, um, what does Overwatch do? Use a ranged weapon to target a limited area, such as a doorway, hallway, or the eastern side of a clearing, and make an attack against the next viable target to enter that area. It works as a weight action, but you also negate any benefit the target would have from cover, position, surprise, range, illumination, or visibility. Okay. Uh, inflict one additional point of damage, and it can remain on Overwatch as long as you wish, within reason. Okay. So yeah, you can you can definitely do that. So you spend one in like point, you set yourself up on the top of one of the overpasses that spans this freeway. Um, you know, sort of one of those, those walkways that spans across it. Uh, and you take up your perch there and begin scanning the vicinity of the crash site uh, for any sort of ambush. Sentinels on Overwatch, guys. Just watch your back. What do them gas grenades look like, by the way? Like they say anything? Are you lo- are you gonna look at them or is somebody gonna look at them? I can't look at them. I can't look at them. <laughs> yeah, uh, can't I will look them. at the uh, gas canisters. Okay, so I, think uh, I can probably like take a picture somehow and send it to him if he's got a way to view it. So, <laughs> okay, uh, he has an eight megapixel camera in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, no, your communicators uh, I'll say have a uh, capacity to send high resolution images to each other as well. Uh, so you pick one of them because take the pictures of it, uh, which comes up on your display, uh, Sentinel. And as you 
look at it, the uh, canisters, they don't have any, um, any like writing on them, like, you know, this industry or anything like that. They look like they were created like in the black market or something based on your experience. Uh, but there is sort of an over the top and it, it sort of strikes you as a little comical, almost like skull and crossbones there, like something that wouldn't actually, you know, serve any purpose here other than like decorative, but there's like a big skull and crossbones, like poison on the, uh, on each of the canisters. Well, someone's got a sense of humor. I'll give him that. Uh, I will, like, I've, I've kind of imagined this, that I've got, like, little storage areas in certain parts of my body. I can just put things for later. Sure. Yeah, so I can just sort of put the canister in one of those for now. And I'd like to go take a look inside the cab of the truck, see if there's any records of what this was carrying. Okay, so you go over to look at the um, the computer console of the, the hover freight and get an idea of, of what it was transporting. Uh, uh, Sarah Bellix, are you going over to the... Yeah, I'll run for the guy that's still alive and also okay. say, one of them's alive <laughs> as I go over there. Uh, and Accelerando, what are you doing right now? Um... And just being ready to leap to bait of whoever needs it, but uh, how far away do uh, civilian emergency services seem to be? Um, you're getting the idea from from what's happening. They're having a hard time getting through the kind of gridlock traffic. You can hear some that seem to be circling around to come down the freeway from the other direction, uh, but you get the idea that they're probably about five or ten minutes out still, based okay. on the kind of the chaos that has ensued. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know how good I'd be at traffic controlling. So in the meantime, I'll just wait if someone needs me to go do something fast. Okay. Um, so let's see. We'll do... Um, or actually, so Machina went to the cab. So yeah. Bellix is going to the person. I'll check the like the actual transit unit part of it. Okay, yeah, that's the big busted part mm -hmm. right now, kind of climbing up into the hollowed area to check around and see what's inside. Yep. Okay, so um, Machina, are you, you're like plugging yourself into the computer to try to game. So I'm going to have you make an, um, we're going to make this an intellect task. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any appropriate abilities or anything that might apply to sort of gaining or acquiring the knowledge from this computer other than just being a computer yourself? <laughs> uh, at the minute, it is just being a computer myself with this body, actually. Yeah. Okay. It's not going to be an incredibly difficult task. Um, I'll say it's going to be a difficulty four uh, for you. Okay. I only roll a seven. Okay, so not quite enough. You begin to get into the systems, but you realize that, uh, and, and you have some experience with this, this is encrypted by like Ein servers. This is this is like high level encryption on this uh, server here, or on this uh, console here, and it, it's difficult to get through and you're, you're continuously kind of being hosted by the system. Um, let's see, Sarah Bellix, you're going over to the uh, unconscious man um, who's like semi in a semi unconscious state. You should feel, you can see him like trembling and tremoring as this green sort of coloring beca becomes even more and more intensified on his skin. He's like unconscious. So I try to very gently like see if I can wake him up. Okay. Um, you walk over and you shake him. And he lets out like a, a cry of severe pain as, as you do that. Uh, <laughs> as, I'm not, I mean, you're not like really shaking him hard, but just like the smallest touch uh, as you try to, to wake him up, um, cause him to like shriek in pain. Uh, but as this happens, he does kind of jolt awake uh, and he tries to move and he says, get back, back. It's all right. I'm here to help. What happened? They attacked. Um, helicopter came from the west. 
There were too many of them. Who were they? Don't know. <coughs> I, I didn't recognize them. They took the war droid. <coughs> the what? Droid. R-13 unit. <coughs> Transporting it to military base. You have to get it back. <coughs> okay. I'm a doctor. Do I feel like this guy's definitely gonna die? Uh... Based on your expert opinion... Probably. Should I run one of the EMTs on their way here? Or... He needs help now, if he's gonna survive. Uh, trying to think if he would survive me carrying him over. Although, um, I guess I'm still technically checking out the back of the truck right now. Did I hear that the 13 unit was stolen? Uh, I'm going to assume you guys don't have your communicators open all the time, or an open frequency all the time, so you guys can actually like, choose what information you share. Accelerando. Yeah, what's up, Sarah? Sarah Felix? I'm going to have to come up with a nickname. <laughs> you can call me Sarah, it's fine. Um, this man needs help. Like five he'll... minutes ago. <laughs> Do you think he'll survive me taking him, or do I need to bring someone here? What do I think? <laughs> I don't know how superpowers I work. Mean, Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor! <laughs> you're pretty sure he can't survive the weight. Uh, so that's, you know, whether or not the jostling around carrying him is going to hurt him anymore, it can't hurt him any more than, than dying here on the pavement. Okay, um... Yeah, then I will scoop him up and try and as gently as I can speed him to one of the ambulances on route. Okay, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to need you to make a speed check for this, see how fast you can make it there. Yep, um, and I may want to use... I have an edge, I may want to apply an effort. There's This is yeah. the mechanics, I I'm, don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say uh, it's going to be a difficulty... It's going to be hard. This is going to be a difficulty five check. Um, okay. In there in this amount of time. So you can, um, first of all, you have power shifts in, yep. in speed, don't you? Is that all yeah. speed shifts? Um, dexterity, movement, acrobatics, initiative, and speed defense. I'll classify this as movement. So you okay. can reduce it by however many power shifts you have. So that's three. Okay. So you reduce it to a two. Um, and you can expend effort if you want to to reduce it to a Do one. I have to do that before or after you making the roll? You have to do it before. Um, and then that's. Okay, so then it would be, normally it would be taking three from the speed pool, but because I have an edge, that makes it only two? Uh, yeah, yeah, only two. That's right. Okay, so I will two. go ahead and expend an effort, so it should only be difficulty one now. Difficulty one, so you just have to roll a three or higher. Come on. <laughs> oh, good thing I did that. That's a five. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, but you see, expending, uh, kind of exerting yourself, you, you pick him up and go zoom, racing down the freeway, uh, vaulting over a section of the, the divider um, and very quickly making your way um, down between the cars. You see the ambulance trying to work its way between some of the gridlock traffic. You zoom up to the ambulance. The driver kind of like hitting the brakes as you stop in front of him very quickly uh, with this poison guy at hand. This guy's from the accident up ahead. He's been poisoned. We're not sure by what. Had skull and crossbones on it, but here, he's, he's dying. Do what you can. Okay. I gotta uh, go. And then I <laughs> zip back. Like I make sure he gets settled safely into the back of the ambulance and then I zip back to the accident site. Okay. Uh, as you as you put lift him into the back of the ambulance, the, the paramedics begin to take him and they begin to throw an oxygen mask over his face and get an IV in him. Uh, as he does, he kind of rips the mask away for a second and clutches your arm as you begin to uh, rush off and says, <clears throat> Towards the bay. Towards the bay, got the it. Chopper went towards the bay. Towards the bait, got it. And you see his eyes roll back and he begins to pass out as the paramedics frantically begin to tend to him. 
Okay, um, I'll just start running back, but over the communicator just be said the chopper headed towards the bay, Sentinel. You have any eyes that way? Can I look and kind of see if what I can see? Yeah, so you can uh, you move your position, climbing up on top of the um, the roof part of this this overpass, and setting up, looking down your scope towards the uh, uh, towards the Tokyo Bay. Uh, I'll have you make a perception check. Um, cool. I assume you have like a scope on your rifle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is going to be for you then uh, I'll say a th- task th- uh, a difficulty task of 3. Yeah. Oh, that's initiative. Wrong one. Where right, that's perception. There we go. 6. Okay. I don't see nothing. <laughs> well, you well, it because I'm trained in it, so it, it drops by one. Oh, okay. So yeah, it would have been a d- difficulty task of two. Um, so so you do, you just barely beat it <laughs> with a six. Uh, so you look over towards the bay um, and begin sort of scanning the area, looking for any sign of movement or any sign of a chopper. You know, it's only been about 10 minutes or so since the thing left. So uh, you think you might be able to get an eye on it. And you see... Uh, over towards uh, Yokohama Port, there is a, you can just barely see as it dips down over behind one of the warehouses, you can see the what looks like a helicopter or a hover chopper um, with something dangling underneath it as it descends down uh, into or near a warehouse. Well, I just barely got sight of it. Uh, it's by the port. I know I can't get there in time. Accelerando, if you want to Try to figure out what's going on. You're the fastest one here. Yeah, I can go run recon. Um, Just stay safe. If they can do this to everyone here, uh, going alone is probably not a good idea. Yeah. Um, I, let's let's figure out what we can from this from this site first before I head over there. But then I'll I'll go run recon after. All right. So. Head back to the site and then go check the back of the truck, unless someone else has already gotten to that at this point. No, you couldn't. I don't, I don't think anybody else said they were going to. And I'll say, uh, yeah, you zoom back. You had started to look in there. Um, and as you get back to sort of zipping back to the group in a number of like three or four seconds, um, you surveying the inside of the destroyed cargo freight, you can see a number of uh, like clamps and like facets around the inside of it that signifies that something very big was kept inside of it. Um, It looks like it was two large structures, um, though you aren't entirely sure what they, what they are at this point. Well, looks like there were two of whatever this truck was transporting and they were big. The man said war droids. Is that what he said? Mm Mm-hmm. Can oh, I make joy. another go of getting through the security? Uh, you can retry the task. Uh, you have to spend a uh, you have to spend a point of intellect to retry it, though. I will do that. Uh, also, I'll point out I did a very dumb thing and forgot to look at my power shifts. I do have an intelligence power shift which affects intellect, defense rolls, and all knowledge, science and crafting skills. So it does. So that would put it from a difficulty, what I say before, it was a difficulty uh, four. four check. So that puts it down to a difficulty three check. Okay, so I'll spend one from the pool. Oop. Uh, eight. Just, just barely missed it again. And as you, um, as you try to hack into it, suddenly there's a big, like, red X that forms on the console and just there's this kind of small beeping noises beep 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 as the computer seems to have locked you out entirely the hardware appears to have locked me out I cannot access any any of the data on the cargo from here Hey, uh, Sarah, you said something about a uh, military 
hardware. Did he say what kind it was? Uh, he said the words war and droid. And well, that could be anything. Something 13? Would I have any knowledge of what she was talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, you could make a... You can make a knowledge roll or a, an intellect check. Um, do you have anything that applies to... Not really. Okay. He's good at shooting things. <laughs> so I'll say this is going to be a difficulty... Uh, well, it's not going to be too hard. I'll say a difficulty two check for you. So just straight intellect check? Yeah. Hopefully this is the right button. 15? Okay. Yeah, you... Uh, you recognize the number and you sort of played R13 war droids. Uh, they are one of the, the newest model prototype war droids that have been created by Ein facilities as, uh, uh, well, essentially peacekeeping units. Um, highly armored, very dangerous. I mean, they're, they're big killing robots. And uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, you said there were two in this truck. That's what it looks like from in here. Oh, that's a bad sign. That is not not it's not something we want to deal with. What uh, do you like to share with the class? Well, I've never seen one up close. I've just heard rumors on you know back alley contacts, but uh, they're brand new models of. Well, I calls them peacekeepers, but really they're. They're war machines, uh, heavily armored, heavily armed, and uh, if anyone else stole them, got through all the encryption, and then could use them against someone else, I would not want to be in the vicinity when they unleashed them. Unfortunately, I rather believe it is our duty to be within the vicinity in case such an event occurs. I mean, mm. technically, maybe... Fine, okay, you're kind of right. It's okay. If you still wish to perform a recon duty, I can call in the Goliath and hopefully meet you at the location if things go awry. Yeah, I think Goliath's going to be our best bet in this case, in case these droids come out guns blazing. Um, But yeah, I can, can make my way over, see what I can see, see if there's a good way for the rescue to approach. Is where we saw the chopper go, is there any kind of overland route or would it just be by the water or by air? Uh, no, the, the, the port that they went to is closest, is, is land. There's only land between you and it. It's on the closest side of the bay. Gotcha. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I will make my way over there, but then once I'm close enough, try and be stealthy about it so that they don't just see a blur running around their base. Okay, uh, so I'll have you make instead for this one a uh, a stealth check, um, which is going to be, I think, speed-based. Okay, um, but I don't think I think my power shifts apply to it. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. That's a 15 speed roll. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really good. So, yeah, you yeah. Uh, <laughs> you go zipping over as everyone else, the rest of you are beginning to make your way over at your own speed, and Machina is sort of going off to swap out um, his loadouts. Uh, you make your way over zipping across the the freeways and the alleyways between buildings over towards the port. Let's see. Uh, as you make your way there, you come up to the outside of the warehouse district in this area and uh, sort of slow down a bit, um, zipping between buildings and being more strategic about the locations that you're stopping to observe what's happening. Um, as you approach there, you see a, uh, a large warehouse, um, as Sentinel described, at the outskirts of the, of the port. Um, you can see a, let's see, 
you can see on the roof of one of the lower buildings, there is some sort of helicopter pad. You can see a, a chopper resting there. Uh, you also see probably two or three dozen um, guards sort of patrolling the vicinity of this warehouse. Um, it looks heavily locked down. There are cameras at each of the corners. There's too much security for this uh, middle of nowhere kind of rundown looking warehouse. Okay. And um, I'll just relay that over the comms. Chopper here, a few dozen guards, way heavier security than run of the mill docks would have. Uh, do the guards look like they have any similarity in uniform to the hazmat suits or? Uh, yes, they, the area around here and as you approach the fence that surrounds the place has all these signs about like biohazards and, um, and also like keep out signs posted around the fence. And yeah, each one of the guards is wearing the, the same white hazmat suits. Okay. Yeah, de definitely related to our our bad boys from the truck. Same hazmat suits. These guys have terrible fashion sense. Why do the villains have such bad fashion sense? Come on. Just disappointing. Is there any way for any of us to get in? I mean, aside from Machina just kicking all the doors down. Well, once once he gets here with Goliath, I think Stealth's kind of out the window, but I can look around, see if I can find something for couple of us to get in unnoticed we can find the shortest way in I don't know I don't even know how we're gonna get these things out but I think hopefully we can secure them and call Ayn in to do clean up or wonder fair enough yep I'll um, head your so... way alright so you all begin to uh, rush over in that direction to uh uh, to back up Accelerando as he's scoping out the area. Accelerando, as you're zipping around the fence, continue your, your, your sweep of the perimeter. Um, there are a couple ways that you can see to get in. Um, the uh, closest or the most probably open area for the your group to enter, it looks like on the eastern side of the warehouse, um, there is a section where the fence is kind of closest to the building. There's not a there's not a door there, but uh, it looks a little bit less defended mm -hmm. um, and a little bit more susceptible to maybe giant robots. Good to know. Um, see, so I'll tell everyone to just rendezvous, meet up at the east side of the building towards where this vulnerability seems to be. Okay. And then just as I'm waiting for everyone to arrive, just keeping an eye out, making sure I'm not spotted, seeing if there are any developments. What time of day is it? Is it like the middle of the day? Uh, it's getting to be like late afternoon at this point. This all black thing really worked better when I was only working at night. Yeah, it must get hot when it's the middle of the day in that get up. I mean, yeah. we are in we are in Tokyo. The humidity is incredibly high right now. <laughs> it's pretty uh, breathable, but the black just, just sucks like in that sun. Like a daytime outfit. Variant. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all of you in your own time begin uh, make your way over to group up with uh, Accelerando, uh, like a block over from where the, the warehouse is. And uh, after a few minutes later, uh, Machina, as you have gone back to your, where do you keep your other body? Um, okay, for the sake of this actually making sense, do you mind if I insert sort of a bit of a law thing here? Sure. Uh, like, so for all the droids that are working, they basically get a form of credit or money that they can use, basically that pays for their own repairs. Okay. Since Machina repairs himself, he's been, he saved, he saved those for his own sort of, uh, for a house, which has, or something similar, which is, which he can keep, well, a garage would be, make more sense, but a garage he can keep his body and his workshop in to actually 
do this. <laughs> like a like a studio apartment, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he he's a robot that owns a studio apartment. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Throws awesome keggers at his, uh, his apartment. I like it. Uh, so yeah, you you go back and you take the lift up to your unit and swap out your oil cans everywhere. <laughs> Small about your central core uh, to this larger, kind of looming, monstrous-looking robot in the corner of the room. Uh, in true comic book fashion, do you mind if I do a quick bit of a lore dump here as well? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, as Machina changes his bodies, uh, a change in his internal processing systems happens. To compensate for the extra strength and mechanisms within this unit, his intelligence significantly decreases... But extra subroutines activate to increase his anger and aggression levels to utilize the body's full potential. Okay. And kind of you feel that the system's coming online and the more sort of primitive uh, machina comes into fashion or comes into being again. You begin rushing your way through the city. I just pull on Hulk leap across the city here. (laughs) Yeah. Just like in three leaps uh, makes way and, and the rest of you kind of hear as you're stand as you're all standing there this doosh, 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 as suddenly this loudly heralded by the three uh, incredibly deafening uh, thumps as uh, machina makes its way across the city you hear some car alarms going off in the distance uh, and Goliath uh, protocol Machina makes his way into this alleyway that you're gathering in. Totally inconspicuous. <laughs> yes, they will definitely not hear us coming. Well, I mean, I'd better get started! And I just go out the alley and I just charge in the nearest <laughs> door. <laughs> well, not gonna... they're not gonna hear us! <laughs> no. Make way towards the fence. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, I don't. Go, yeah, I just make a door. I don't. Make- <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna have you make a, a strength check to to or a might check. Sorry to to bust down the wall. Uh, this would be a. Whew, I mean, just charge straight through a wall. Uh, I would say this would normally be like a like six. So I have three power shifts in. Um, strength in this body. So. Okay. so that brings it down to a three. Uh, do you want to apply anything else to it, or do you have any training that might apply to this? I don't have any training that would apply to it. Um, I will also, just because I really want to get through this straight away, uh, apply an effort to it. Okay, so you spend, I think your your edge is in uh, strength, am I correct? Uh, with this body, I've got one might and one speed. Okay, so yeah, you can reduce that. So expend two uh, might in order to reduce it to a two. Mm hmm. Uh, 15. <laughs> 15. Yeah, that's enough. You just, uh, <laughs> the rest of you just watch as <laughs> makes his way towards the building and then without even breaking stride, just tears through the chain link fence and <laughs> straight into the, the wall, just leaving this perfect. Uh, semicircle breach in the wall um, and immediately after that you hear this a sound resonating from it it's like, <laughs> as, this, as the sirens begin to sound in the uh, in the warehouse I come over the communicator and go smashing job as usual <laughs> rest of you follow sounds like that's our cue party people All right. yeah you all go rushing into the building and you, um, Machina, as the rest kind of come in behind you, uh, you find yourselves in a sort of, it's a huge difference from the outside. Uh, the interior is all like white, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, it's like a hospital room, basically. Like, so like uh, very white. sterile? Yeah, very sterile. There's a hallway that extends to both ends, some uh, stainless steel doors uh, without windows on them on, across the hall here. Um, very medical, very clean on the inside. And as a siren blares, uh, you hear the sound of five or six footsteps uh, very hurriedly making their way down the halls as uh, a number of guards begin to rush in your direction. Can I, like... Is there a corner I can duck around so I can see out, but so I'm not just 
like standing out in the middle of the hallway to be shot at. <laughs> <laughs> so you, yeah, you can kind of stay on the other side of the breach here and and be ready when they come around the corner. Can uh, I I'm, can I do my Overwatch thing again? Since sure. I know, like, since she's covering one area, I'm going to cover like the other area just in case someone comes in. Okay, you set to to the left. Um, you sell uh, Cerebellix. Watch to the right. Yeah, we around. we army of two. This yeah. <laughs> Everybody back remember to back. that game? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm gonna have everyone make a uh, a initiative uh, task. Uh, the difficulty on this is a two. <laughs> I think well, I just I'm gonna go last. Succeed. You do. <laughs> three power shifts. Yeah, you can still roll to see if you get a minor or major effect, but you you're, you already automatically succeed. <laughs> yep. So that's a. Tw- well, which beats a four. Yeah. So where it says uh, train plus three, does that automatically add to that? Because uh, I rolled a 16, so I was wondering if... With the... initiative, it looks like it does. If you mouse over, yeah. it's showing a okay. 13. Okay, cool. Yep. So Wait, what do you have to roll to beat a two? A six. <laughs> I rolled an eight! <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 19. All right. Uh, As five guards now around the corners, uh, three on the left, two on the right, all of you very ready for this. Uh, Who acts first? I'm guessing the one with the 19. (laughs) (laughs) It it doesn't matter. You you guys can go in whatever order you want, uh, whatever makes the most sense. I am just going to charge at the nearest guard and use my basic punch, which still does a lot of damage, but Okay, left or right? <laughs> uh, eeny, meeny, left. Okay, so you go towards the three. <laughs> make your way down the hall. Uh, yeah, go ahead and make your attack. It's a difficulty two. <laughs> I think you probably automatically did. Um, I somehow only rolled a three. <laughs> Actually, no, I have the accuracy one, so it would reduce difficulty build by one. So that makes it a three. <laughs> Uh, or it makes it a, a one, so you only had to had to roll a three. So you do, yeah. you do have her hit. Uh, <laughs> my light, my regular punch, not putting much effort into it, still does eleven damage. Yeah, he just you, flicks him. Yeah, you do sort of you walk. You're running down the hall, or not really, kind of, you know, lumbering. Lumbering down the hall is a better word. And as one of them comes up, you just sort of swat at him like a like a ping pong ball, and he just goes right into the back wall and you see him immediately just out like a light as he slumps down unconscious. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Okay, who's next? Uh, well, I mean, Accelerando, go for it. Yeah, um, I'm going to go the other way, so I guess to the right. Um, try and zip around behind one of them, or behind the group, if there's enough room for me to maneuver okay um and then just try and club one of them over the back of the head with my nightstick okay so you zip around behind one pulling up your nightstick as you're watching sort of moving in slow motion uh difficulty two attack uh that's an 11 which beats difficulty three and then the the mod reduces it yeah (laughs) so that's five damage okay five damage you uh you come behind, just whack in the back of the head, uh, topple, almost topples over, losing his balance. So you see him kind of ah, uh, looking back towards you. As you, shoot, <laughs> I assume, zip away yep. uh, in that instance. It, uh, all right. All right. I'll go. Oh, I didn't put on my comet music. Sorry, guys. <gasps> oh, it just got so scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will um, kind of knock my goggles down over my eyes so I could see farther um, and look past I guess if I can see past him in this hallway past Machina and try to mind slice one of the dudes okay again difficulty two okay okay, okay. Okay, well, I rolled a four, but I have a... I'm trained in it, so I have a minus one <laughs> to the difficulty. Okay, so that makes it just... a difficulty one, yeah. meaning I get him. <laughs> you do. Um, so that is 11 
uh, intellect damage, which okay, so no. ignores armor. Yeah. Because it goes uh, straight to his brain. So you, you look to one, just kind of hold out your hand and clench there, and you watch as he just passes out mid stride, just boosh, uh, right on the ground as the other guard that's standing next to him that just got clocked over the back. Or no, you're going with the three at the other end. Uh, so as uh, now the one guard remaining over there is very scared. Or no, two guards over there. Or no, one. I can't count. Uh, uh, one guard over there is is now facing off with Goliath right in front of him. Okay. And I duck back behind the corner. And two guys left right now. Um, oh, he's just gonna. Right he's just gonna open fire with his shotgun onto the entire hallway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Will I also uh, need to do a speed defense thing? Yeah. Are you going left or right here? <laughs> uh, well, what way did Sarah Bellix go? So, she went left. I so, went I'm left. going right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's the difficulty? Uh, it's the difficulty two. Well, I rolled a six, but it drops it down by two. So, because... yeah, you just had to roll. Cool. So, eight damage. Okay. Uh, and is, does that actually apply to more than one on the hallway, or does that... I, it doesn't say. Okay. I'm so, just saying, like, I use a shotgun, and it's a medium <laughs> weapon, I think, we're, so... Yeah, we're, we'll assume that it's, like, uh, it's like it's like buckshot. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you're... You go, and you aim down at one of the, uh, the guard that didn't just get whacked over the back of the head, and as the bullet or as the shot strikes him, sort of spins in place, a little bit of blood spatter across the wall, and he falls the uh, collapses to the ground like a sack of potatoes. All right, and then that'll put it to their turn, and there are only <laughs> there are two left right now, one very injured and one that hasn't been touched that's currently standing in front of uh, Goliath. So, uh, so yeah. there's just this guard standing next to a 15 foot tall. Yeah, your foot, your head's kind of scraping the top of the roof here, and um, they are going to run away. <laughs> <laughs> so the two of them, uh, each kind of ignoring the other and just running, trying to run back down the hallway, and you just hear their footsteps as they're as they round the corners, trying to get away from you the best they can. Uh, any of you guys pursuing one direction or another? Yeah. Um, are there any kinds of attacks of opportunity in this, or no? Uh, you can you can take a specific action to do that, like okay. a, but uh, not normally. Yeah, I mean, I suppose just at the top when it gets to me again, I will try and chase the one that I clubbed before down, which is pretty and... easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He could only move using his action to run. He can only move uh, a short distance, which you just do all the time. Yep. Um. Uh, I'll go to chase down the one that was standing next to me. Okay. Uh, so it's gonna... I'm not even going to try hit him. I'm just going to charge through him to the like through the next wall. <laughs> okay. So you're just going to use your action to move and, and just plow through him as well. Sure. Basically. I'll say it's enough. So, uh, so you go to make your attack roll, uh, XL Rondo, as you race after one of them. Yep. Uh, 16 beats difficulty 5 or beats difficulty 2 because of the mod. Yeah, yeah, it's the <laughs> you're, I mean, you're gonna hit him as long as you don't roll a 1. You just yeah. dip around uh, as he's rushing away from you, you up here on the other side, just whack, <laughs> knock him over the top of the head, and he collapses as well. Um, <laughs> Machina, you see the guard in front of you that uh, is rushing to the end of the hall. He gets to a door uh, and is frantically trying to use his key card to get through the door. It's just goosh, 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 rushing after him and then just slam through the wall and the door just goosh, out on the other side. Uh, his body just being scattered through the rumble, uh, rubble, clearly unconscious at this point. <laughs> Uh, since me and Sentinel, while we're in short range, are always in telepathic contact with each other, I would just telepathically say to him, like, one day they'll realize they need us. 
You're muted. Can I talk back to her in... Yeah. yeah. Okay, then, yeah, of course. I hear that, and I just look over and... Uh, yeah, one day. <laughs> I take um, off after him. Are you but guys I hover. I don't run anywhere. Are you guys all going after Goliath? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, just unless there's anything immediately obvious down my hallway. Uh, no, you're basically seeing the same. You're seeing a, a door at the end of the hallway with like a large sliding metal door that looks has a key card reader next to it. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and swipe my dude's key card, but then go back towards Goliath and the rest. <laughs> you swipe the key card and say, dee, dee, dee. Uh, it opens up and uh, you, you can hear lumber. It actually opens up to a large like central room. Looks like both these hallways actually come out to the same area. Uh, so you just look to your left and you see, you see Machina standing there, rubble scattered around him and just like the smoke and debris settling, <laughs> standing on the, at, at the other hallway. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> Just waving from across the room. <laughs> well done with the doors. Just in general, team. Uh, you still hear that sound of this doo, doo, uh, sounding in here, but you don't notice that there's no immediate footsteps going on in this area. Um, you can definitely hear the sounds of guards shouting and trying to find some intruders, but they haven't quite made it to this room yet. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's kind of how I, I wrote my character is... I- Cerebellix like zooms off and Accelerando is on the other side. As he's walking past the one guard there, he just points a shotgun to his chest, pulls the trigger as he walks by. Okay. You all hear a <laughs> uh, as, as uh, Sentinel comes walking down the hallway. Okay. That's going to be in the report. Dead rats don't squeak. Well, do try not to kill all of them. We really got yelled at last time. I'm just saying, I'm not having someone coming up behind me and shoot me in the back again. Um, as you guys are standing in this room, you do notice something a little bit odd in here. In the center of this large central, uh, the large uh, hangar area of this warehouse, there is another room at the center of it, uh, separated, not sharing a wall with anything else, uh, built out of looks solid metal uh, with a few heavily reinforced windows around it. Uh, and you see standing in the center of this room and it looks like there's like a lab inside of it. Um, you see more white flooring and, and lab equipment and beakers and tep- test tubes and a large uh, like a medical table there, operating table. But in that room, there is a monster standing there, uh, standing. That's not Machina? That's not Machina. Actually, about as about equal in size to Machina. Um, a red, almost scale-covered entity, uh, large red claws with, uh, or hands with clawed fingers, um, sort of an ape-like face with gleaming white tusks uh, and uh, spiked protrusions that run down the back of his head. And he's just like pounding on the window there, just uh, trying to get out of the, this room, but not seeming to be able to. And you all recognize this person. Uh, this is this is one of the most wanted uh, criminals in Tokyo at this point. Uh, this is anathema. Um, so that's yeah. a good name. I'm just saying that's a really good name. Uh, and he is by far one of the most dangerous uh, active criminals. Not the most intelligent, but one of the most dangerous active criminals in the city. Uh, someone that, if there wasn't a pane of glass between you and him, you might consider running. I'm still considering running. <laughs> and he's just pounding on the window and shouting right now, but you can't hear anything he's he's saying. Do we have any kind of contact with, you know, like Wonder HQ, or how does that work? Yeah, you could contact them with your communicators. Um, yeah, so just kind of open up and just be like, hey, we've got Anathema here. Don't know if you were all aware of that. Um, but yeah, right now he seems contained. We're going to just leave him be. 
and but like we're literally looking at him right now you, uh, there's a kind of a slightly garbled voice over the end say so, Accelerando what's your location um, at the docks by the bay um, I don't know if you have actual like coordinates or something to give uh, that our communicators would have and just kind of keep track of yeah um, it, you, you give him your coordinates and to copy that do not engage. Repeat, do not engage. Roger that. We will continue looking for the R-13 war droids. Copy that. Over and out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, just wave an anathema and then just move on to the other end of the big room. Yeah, as you're as you're trying to move, um, as you're moving around the room looking for something, you just continue to uh, knock on the window and is like staring at all of you intently, um, like trying. You get like trying to communicate with all of you as he's banging on the window and scratching at it and and like yelling in your direction. Does it look like I want to kill you? Communication or like no? Wait, this is very actually important. You, with your abilities and your just sort of natural read on people, um, no, it's it's get me out. I mean, it's he's sort of always like, I'm gonna kill you, but it's more like, get me out of here or I'll kill you, or I'll kill you, which is different. Can I? Get me out of here and I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> kind of both. <laughs> One moment. I go up to the glass. Okay. And I want to use um, my ability telepathic. Okay. So I spend one intellect point, um, and if he is willing and able to communicate with me, I want to telepathically communicate with Anathema through the glass. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to use a, uh, a GM intervention here um, to say that when you when you try to be communicate with him, uh, and you've obviously never tried to do this with anathema before there's this overwhelming like rage like there's this feedback there that begins to sort of overwhelm you um and you're gonna have to make a um an intellect check to to try to resist it and maintain your focus okay um you can you can accept the uh you can get two xp and share one of those xp with someone else or you can decline it and spend an xp to, to not have to do this check nope I, i'm gonna do it it's more fun that way Okay, who are you going to give your other XP to? Accelerando. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll say this is going to be a difficulty... Uh, difficulty three. Um, it's intellect. I was going to say I have lots of skills that are semi-related to this. I don't really know what, which what sort of skills. one it is. So I am trained in anything involving social interactions, getting hunches about people around you, discerning dispositions, and sensing emotions. I don't okay. know if any of that helps me. I'll allow the sensing emotions part. Okay. So what does that reduce it to? Is uh, it trained in I'm it? trained in it, so it Something reduces it by too. one. Yeah. You spend any effort or just... I rolled a 17! Oh, nice. Um, so you don't get any of the damage stuff because you're not trying to hurt him, but... No, but that, it's good. That's a really good roll. Uh, so you you force through and sort of push the emotion back towards him, and uh, you begin to understand his thoughts. And it says, uh, That bastard locked me in here. Let me out. Why would I do that? Because I won't kill you if you do. It's not really me I'm worried about, to be honest. 
uh, and you hear his uh, kind of his thoughts trail off again as you're reading his mind. He said, "Damn you, genocide! You promised." Do I know who that is? Uh, yeah, you, you recognize the name. Uh, there is a criminal, uh, another criminal in the city that you've seen the wanted posters or, or um, that there have been some reports given on uh, Mr. Genocide, um, who's another sort of like uh, more of like a boss type criminal in the city, runs a gang of thugs and such, and it's starting to make sense where you might be. Mr. Genocide? Oh my gosh. Well... I think I know who's behind this. Want to share with the class? Genocide. Oh joy. Put him behind the glass anyway. How? Does it matter? I mean, for uh, someone as badass as an anathema, it might be a little pertinent, but I don't know if he's gonna want to tell you how he was trapped, so... You are tuned into his thoughts right now, so he can't really hide much um, if you try to ask him. I'll try. <laughs> and ask him, how did this happen to you? <laughs> so it's sort of this bizarre situation where he's like, I'm not going to tell you. And then immediately you hear in his thoughts the, the explanation. He said, uh, promise to restore my memories. <sighs> and um, continues saying, used my blood to make something. Something he put on those droids. <sighs> water treatment plant oh, oh, that's where he is gonna go there kill him oh. yeah I don't think you're going anywhere big guy he looks at you and is like what I'll share this information with the rest of the group cool cool great great not good. Still, still need yeah. to find and or disable the R-13s. If yeah. we find the droids, can you disable them? One way or another. Fair enough. But if... If, Gen if Genocide's at the water treatment plant and is doing something with the droids, they're probably there. But we should quickly check the rest of this space first before heading over. Um, and then I will just kind of zip off and see if I can scout out the rest of this base. <laughs> okay. And you can very quickly on your own. Uh, and in a matter of seconds, as you see, uh, you zoom down the halls and quickly scout out the interior, uh, navigating past probably 10 or 15 guards that are still trying to make their way uh, towards the central area, probably about three minutes away. Um from being able to get all the way over here but you see a number of hallway or a number of rooms uh there are some rooms filled like the armory with uh weapons and other and other things like that and there there's uh, other rooms with uh more testing areas you can see uh, where it looks like some sort of solutions have been distilled things have been crafted large sort of um centrifuges uh, there are some uh, animal cages on the side for, for testing animals uh, and you do come across as you zip over another room a large like workshop area for like outfitting uh, robots and repairs and things like that that looks like it's been used fairly recently so no robots in there but yep okay um, yeah just as I'm zipping around relaying this to the team and I guess to Wonder HQ in terms of what what they should expect here because it sounds like we need to head out and get to the water treatment plant ASAP what's up Kyle I have to go okay so it's cool and all sorry about that but I gotta go yeah that's fine okay cool I 
guess we had, we had an emergency. We need a second span to fix the overlay. Just like one second. You can keep talking. Okay. Um, let's see. So what were you what were you doing again? Sorry. I'm... Uh, relaying what's in the base to the team and to Wonder HQ so they know you know how many people what to send in to clean up here as we go to the water treatment plant. Okay. Uh, you can definitely do that as you zip around and then eventually sort of make it back in a matter of 10 or 15 seconds. All right. Well, there are a bunch of guys coming this way. Uh, we can try and clean them up for when the Wonder uh, team gets here, or we can head out now, get a head start on getting to the water treatment plant. I say we go now. All right. Sounds good to me. Okay. So you uh, call in your coordinates and the you all go rushing back out through the large broken portion of the wall down the hallway and uh, out in the street in the direction of the water treatment plant kind of a couple miles down the bay. Uh, as you rush that direction, you do hear the sound of about like five or six um, hovercraft that is overhead uh, from downtown Tokyo, each one of them with the uh, with the Wonder insignia on the bottom of them uh, as they head out towards the warehouse, which is still making that choo, choo noise um, with the alarm going off, uh, hoping that they might be able to sweep up the rest, uh, which they probably will. The guards were sort of pushovers. Yeah. Uh, you all rush uh, around Accelerando, you kind of scouting ahead and navigating the best you can in that direction. Uh, Machina leaping from building to building and uh, Cerebellix, you zooming over with your, your hover boots. Um, as you make your way to the, um, the water treatment plant, um, you can already hear over in that, as you approach, the sound of uh, sirens blaring in the area. Um, you can see probably five or six uh, first response vehicles, like uh, police cars, gathered around like the perimeter of the gate uh, at the entrance to the water treatment facility, which looks like it's been busted open. Um, they are holding off the perimeter there and you can see some rubble clearing and some debris clearing from one section of the the facility, which looks like it's been very similar to what uh, Machina did. Uh, looks like it's been busted open, like something very strong pushed its way in there. Oh boy. Um, and it Things have broken into the facility. Um, well, this may be wild conjecture, but I assume he's going to try and poison the water supply with Anathema's blood. That's what this feels like. I can, ru I can rush in there, see if I can stop that from happening, but probably means there are going to be two big angry robots there. We've we brought one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should let him go first. I just nod. I, I'm not even going quickly. I just saunter in through that hole. I'm ready okay. for it. The police see you all approaching and uh, they turn your direction to see uh, your Goliath body approaching and the cop cars, they all jump in their cars and quickly back up so <laughs> you can push through. There uh, have been accidents before. <laughs> there have been. Lots of bills being the sent to... The city has spent a lot of money on you. Yeah. Uh, Look, so, it was only one city block, okay? If I wasn't there, it would have gotten worse. Yeah. <laughs> and the last, the last court decision that was made in the uh, in the case where they were suing you was determined that the city needed to take some precautions to try to reduce the damage. So uh, that's what they're trying to do is mitigate as much as possible before they come after you for the, the for the rest. That's why you need your day job. <laughs> um, as you um, kind of saunter across the ground <laughs> towards the are you just going into the same hole yeah uh, same hole you uh rush through there and you just see this sort of 
trail of carnage pushed like straight through the center of the building. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the hallways crisscrossing at angles, rooms that kind of interspace throughout the, the the interior of this. But two large things just like pushed their way straight through through here, like a like something burrowed uh, through this this structure. Um, you all crunch your way through the rubble and um, through the debris. Can I use uh, our communicators to like talk to my friends while we're going? Yeah. Is there a way, do you think... I guess we don't know how far along in this plan he is. We didn't ask a whole lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're the smart one. I'm the do things quickly, think later type. <laughs> Damn it, I'm a doctor, not a miracle worker. <laughs> oh, I wish this game had inspiration. It's, that's like, chat made that my catchphrase. I can't let them down. Um, <laughs> depending on how far along we feel like he is in this plan, um, it might behoove us, Accelerando, mm -hmm. to let Machina make a lot of noise and see if we can't, maybe while there is distraction happening, figure out how to shut off whatever it is he's planning on doing. I don't imagine anyone named Mr. Genocide is going to act slowly as far as poisoning a population goes. Yeah, that seems like a good course of action. Machina, can you make us a whole lot of noise? Try not to damage the water supply too much. Done, and I'll try. Like, just go charging through this tunnel. I love this guy. <laughs> okay, so he's going charging straight to the center of the facility where these robots presumably are, and the two of you are... Uh, what is your game plan? I can try and zoom us to wherever the control room is, or something. I don't know if we have any idea how this place is laid out. Can or I... If it would... Yeah, if I... So if I put on my goggles, which, like, extend my perception can i try to scan like the building for maybe like a command center or like a central place where perhaps things might be happening evil plans might be being set into motion yeah i mean with your scan and if uh if accelerando is going to kind of rush you from one area of the building to the other to scan the entire thing in a very short amount of time you can you can definitely do that um teamwork so as the two as machina pushes his way uh, forward separating uh i'll say that um uh that sentinel will go with you machina um so he'll follow behind in his cloaked state uh, as the two of you rush around the building and you sort of triangulate some sort of central control area, you do locate that there is a passageway that leads up to uh, a raised portion or a control area that's above the, the main water treatment plant um, at the bottom and all the machinery and stuff down there. Um, so you do, you, you do think you know where, where that would be. Okay, I uh, try and rush us there. That way. Okay, uh, so the two of you rush up there. Machina, you push through to the main water treatment area. You can see a number of vats uh, portioned around the room, steam rising up from them, uh, large tubing working its way across the room. Um, you can sort of see as you stand there, there are a couple of walkways that connect to a central, like, raised... Uh, room of some sort at the, the center of this um, much larger space and uh, you can make out this kind of blur as the Celerando goes rushing up there with uh, Cerebellix a little more black than usual <laughs> yeah um, as you focus then down at the in the center of the room you can see two hulking robotic entities white plating around their body, large red LED displays um, and sensors and gauges all across their their form. Uh, standing not quite as tall as you, uh, but still large and, and fairly intimidating. They're ripping open one of the vats right now, and you see as you enter one of them, 
turns towards you. Anomaly. Destroy. And they both <laughs> hold up a hand in your direction with a large, like, glowing laser at the center of it. Um, at the moment that that's happening, you have uh, Sarah, Sarah Bellix and uh, Accelerando bursting into the control room. And you see at the center of the control room, uh, a man standing there sort of frantically like pulling levers and knobs and pressing buttons and kind of cursing on his best. Like, oh, damn it, damn it, damn it, too complicated, damn it. Uh, he hears the door whoosh, open. <sighs> and as he sighs, there's sort of this cloud that emanates around him. Uh, he turns back towards you, full white suit, bald head, a uh, thin goatee. Uh, he has uh, one of his eyebrows, like extremely, like, very kind of con contorted look to his face. You can see this wisp of sort of greenish gas, like emanating off the side of his mouth. Uh, and you can see on the uh, patch on his sleeve, sewn into this beautiful suit that he's wearing, is this sort of biohazard logo on the side of it, similar to what you saw on the um, canisters before. You weren't supposed to be here so fast. <sighs> yeah, well, fast is kind of what I do. Well, I surrender then. Um, I will go up and zoom around and try and zip tie his arms behind his back. Okay. Um, as you approach, you definitely you see him like reaching back towards one of the levers over there. Um, I'm actually just going to say that we're just going to go ahead and put everybody into initiative at this point. Gotcha. Um, and if you can act before him, then we'll go ahead and... Uh, so the the check for it is... I won't look at your guys' rolls yet. Um, let's see. Why won't... There we go. Uh, it's a difficulty five check against... Um, Actually, no, it'll go up because of the droids. Come on. It's a difficulty six check, sorry. Ooh. Um, okay, let's see. I'm trying to math. Um, I think, yeah, with my power shifts, that should bring it down to a difficulty three, which I met. Okay. I rolled a 15. Uh, 15 will... Uh, you don't have any modifiers for your... I don't know. Okay, so you won't... You'll be going with the other... So it, who, who all... Was Accelerando the only one that beat the difficulty? I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> Nice. So you I don't get even a, know what that means, but it looks really good. <laughs> so you get a major effect. My suggested major effect is that I get an extra action on my turn. Okay. So on your turn, you'll get an extra action. Well done. Uh, random probability. Uh, <laughs> that was all me. All right, so that will put it to those of you that beat the check. So uh, Accelerando and uh, Sarah Bellix. So I'm going to zoom up around him and try and zip tie him. And I'm going to say like one of my inexpensive items is a pack of zip ties for just such a pur sure. purpose. Sure, that's, that's something a speedster would need. So I'll say uh, go ahead and make a... Uh... Hmm... I'll let you do a speed check for this. That makes sense. You'd rely more on your agility than your actual yeah. force. Um, so would my dexterity power shift apply to this then? Uh, what are yours specifically? Uh, it's, it says movement, acrobatics, initiative, and speed defense. Uh, okay. No. Yeah, I'll let it. It's it's a movement thing. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply some effort to this. So it would be a five. What does that bring it down to? Um, five to start with my power shifts and the effort. That should bring it down to a one. Okay. So just got to roll a three or higher. 
I got a four. <laughs> <laughs> you really like cutting it close on those. Yeah. Uh, all right. That, uh, that'll that be enough. You kind of zoom around him, and as he's reaching over to one of the knobs over there, or kind of uh, like a release valve on the side, suddenly, shoom, arms behind his back, and he's currently zip-tied with his arms behind him. He's like, well, yeah. damn it. Uh, all right, that's that's a pretty good use of action. Yep. <laughs> Anything else you're? Uh... Um, I mean, just kind of backing away a step so that I have some time to react if he like tries to headbutt me in the back or something. But other than that, okay. I think that's all I can do. Yeah. So that'll be. Um, let's see. Yeah, that'll be Sarah Bellix. I think you're the only one, the other one that beat the trick. Yes. Um, so I get to do extra stuff because I rolled a 20. Okay. That's fun. Um, so, yeah, so I can take another action on the same turn. Um, so my first one, uh, this guy seems really dangerous to me. And we saw him let off, it was like a cloud of... Mm -hmm. He's like he kind of emanating this, this yeah. cloud of gas there. Is, am I, I don't trust is, it. Is, is, it doing anything to me or not yet uh, or I don't did you avoid it or did you did you I assume into... I would have had to go into it a little to zip tie him. Yeah. Um it hasn't affected you yet. Okay. And when I backed up I would have tried to back out of the cloud. Okay. Yeah, you definitely like I mean, it's not good. You can kinda like cough a bit as you're moving out of it. And definitely is some noxious stuff. I don't trust it. Um, so I'll use one of my actions, I guess. Um, I want to... Uh, I haven't used it yet. I want to take out my whip. And I want to um, pop uh, Mr. Genocide with it and try to daze him. Okay. That's a really good use. Okay, so that's a uh, difficulty five. Be uh, a... Uh... Miter speed check, your choice. Oh, gosh. Um, I use speed, I guess. It doesn't really make a difference. <laughs> I'm not really good at either of them. <laughs> you want to apply anything to it? or? I don't think I have anything to apply to it. A effort. Does this count as a social interaction? No, no. <laughs> you can apply effort to reduce it by one, but unless you're... Tra are you trained in your whip? No. I don't think so. Okay, so... Uh, so the only thing you do is apply effort and expend three miter speed points. That's so many. I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay. So three speed. I rolled a 12, which, which means a difficulty it down to four. A four. It was a five. So that hits. <laughs> wow. So you see him in that moment begin to he kind of looks over his shoulder towards Accelerando and you see him sort of beginning to move uh, and you quickly take your whip and whoosh, uh, stunt like whip him like just in the center of the forehead. You see this large like cut open up uh, and as he does, there's like this like lurching to him and you just see it, like no real damage, but he just sort of sways in place for a second. Okay. Excellent. So, so that'll bring it to to their turns. Um, uh -uh. He can't he can't do anything. I get an extra action on oh, my yeah, turn you get an extra action. because That's I rolled right. natural twenty. Yeah. So what player you intervention. <laughs> <laughs> um, after doing that, I guess is so. Is this like a this is like levers and or is this like a computer system? I saw I'm reaching. Uh, there are the there lever. are computer monitors and but okay. there are some uh, levers and valves and stuff too. Can I then, um, with my extra action, I guess, try to go to one of the monitors and try to figure out like what he's done, like where he's at in this process, so we can start stopping it? Yeah. Uh, you go ahead and make an, uh, make an intellect check, if you have anything that might apply to this with um, technology. I have training in... It's the, sa the same stuff as Machina, so knowledge, science, and crafting. Okay, Any yeah, science. Stuff? Yeah, that'll apply. So you can reduce it by one. I'll say this is a uh, difficulty three check. It's not a heavily encrypted system. I rolled another natural 20! 
funny. <laughs> Okay, I don't think you can get another action on your turn. On my next turn? Can I get something else instead? If you want to pick the same thing, you can pick something else instead. I don't have any other options. I mean, there's a there's a list of the major ones. It's alright, you can take another action on your next turn. Guys, I don't know how to play yeah. this game. <laughs> None of us do. Uh, however, you go quickly kind of uh, pulling levers and, and uh, calibrating the system. You go up to the computer and begin to uh, search for any, like, what the subroutines that are running right now and trying to figure out what exactly is happening. Um, you can see that it appears that he was opening up, like, uh, all the valves of the system, basically, sort of, like, purging the system out to the main water supply. Um so it was in the process of, of connecting and, and turning off all like the safety valves and stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, I can't believe I rolled two natural 20s. So genocide can't do anything, but the, uh, the robots down there, the war droids, they are both going to, um, let's see. They're both going to hold up their hands in the direction of the large hulking monster that's coming towards them and fire off uh, lasers in your direction, uh, Machina. So I'm going to need you to make a speed defense roll. Okay. And the difficulty is six. Well. So you need to roll an 18 or higher. Seven. Seven. All right, you take eight points of damage. Uh, I have uh, four armor, so I take four points. All right, um, and then I need you to make another uh, defense roll against the 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 other lady because both of them are, are firing. Fourteen. Okay, so that's another four points then. And uh, actually, I'll check his. Uh, Griffin or uh, Sentinel would have been in the vicinity of it too. Um, he was behind me there. He was behind you. I'll give him that. No, he, he didn't. He didn't have to make the roll. He took. He was smart enough to take cover. Behind my leg. <laughs> yeah, means that I don't have to roll. So I hate rolling. All right, so that'll put it to your turn. I am charging at the nearest one of these things okay. and. I am gonna smack it. <laughs> okay. As hard as I physically can. Okay, it's a difficulty six check. Uh, if I want to use one of my special abilities that goes with my attack, so I have to declare that before I roll? Yeah, I think so. Unless it says, suggests that you wouldn't have to. Which one is I, it? I would have to. Uh, it's just I've got uh, Bash Controller Field. Uh, I think I'd have to announce them both because it doesn't say I have to. I can wait. Yeah. Oh, I, I am just going to spend from my pool to reduce the difficulty by one. Okay. Uh, with my accuracy, the difficulty, difficulty is reduced by two. Two total? Yeah. Okay, so that puts it at a difficulty four. Big punch. Uh, 17. 17, so you get the additional damage on that. So what's that put the... So the total damage is... Uh, uh, it's 15 normally. 15? Okay. So, uh, so that is 16 damage to this thing. Whew, man. Yeah, you come up and just uppercut into this uh, war droid. You see sparks flying and pieces of it being thrown off. You push, uh, straight into uh, its processors. Uh, the whole thing kind of... Kush, 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 kush. Uh, it's still up, but it's... I mean. This thing is taking a lot of damage in that one impact. Uh, you can also see as you step into it, there's a sort of like haze that's emanating from it. And your sensors bring up that there is this like a poison cloud surrounding these things. It doesn't affect you, um, but it, uh, it you're definitely sensing that in the area. Uh, would I quickly be able to just sort of bring that alert onto everyone else's communicators? Sure. Yeah. So you all get a get an alert from from Machina to let these droids have some sort of poison cloud around them. Okay, uh, and then Sentinel. 
I would just give them to somebody else, but everybody's learning the game, so I don't want to have to <laughs> make somebody else learn another character too. He shoots so him. He's gonna shoot with his uh, with his riffle. Um, and Is that the mechanical term? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh, he's gonna. He's not gonna spend anything. He's just gonna roll, but it reduces it by four. <laughs> wow uh i roll really well when i don't roll all game so that's an 18 so that's a uh it's not a minor effect but this is a plus two to damage so that brings it to 20 points of damage total as he hits the uh one, the other droid that's coming up behind you machina suddenly boosh, just blasted in the back and uh, is also being the spark as one of its arms kind of roar, 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 dangling there. Uh, its head turns around in a 180, kind of whoosh, get back towards Sentinel, uh, who is now visible there. Okay. Uh, so back to the two that started before, Accelerando and Cerebellix. Yep. Um, Go, Speedy. Yep. I'm just going to... I'm just going to rush in and try and knock him out. Uh, and trying to be in his poison cloud as little as possible. So just making nightstick attacks to try and wear him down, but non-lethally. Okay. So um, you can go ahead and make your make your attack against him. Yep. Uh, that's a... Um, rolled in. Eight beats a difficulty of two, but my mod brings it down from a five to a two. <laughs> yeah, so that's enough to hit. Yep. So five damage. Okay, you come up and whack him across the side of the head. I'm however going to use a GM intervention here um, against you, and uh, I'm going to say that when you hit him, uh, kind of smacks him around. Uh, he wheels around and is able to just barely sort of brush his fingers across uh, across your face as he sort of spins in the air from the impact. Uh, as that happens, you feel this kind of like pulse through you of just like death almost. Um, so I'm gonna need you, so you can gain two XP, give one to another player. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you have any XP to deny this with, or do you? Do you I have one because uh... Sarah Bellix gave me oh, one right. from so the you curtains, can, but you can spend an XP to avoid this, or you can hold on to but, it. No, I'll, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> so I get one, and I'll give mine to Sarah Bellix. Okay, um, I'm gonna need you to then make a might defense roll. Okay. Um, difficulty seven. Oh boy. Which means uh, roll twenty one or higher. <laughs> okay. I don't think you can. I mean, <laughs> I could expend effort to try and reduce it, but then I'm already taking those points out of the might pool. Um, uh, no, I'll, I'll just, I'll just automatically fail. I think, <laughs> although I got, <laughs> I got an 18. If that does anything, yeah, that is is very, <laughs> very close. Um, the 18 doesn't do anything, unfortunately. You do, however, take you take five points of speed damage. Uh, okay. This ignores armor, um, and you can feel that the poison is continuing to affect you. Yep. Um, Sarah, uh, Sarah Balix, you see the sort of green color begin to uh, wash up. Accelerando space. Um, so the damage track isn't until one of the pools hits zero? Yes. Okay. But can we recover before then? Or? You can use your action to try to, uh, to do... You, none of you have used it yet, so you can use the action to, to heal. Okay. Um, or Good to, to know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sarah Bellix. Okay. So my natural 20 from last time gives me an extra action now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, that I'll allow it. seems like a rule. Sure. Um, okay, so I'm in the system and he's opened all the valves and is kind of flushing everything into the, wa the city's water supply. Yeah. Essentially. Um, can I... 
use my one action to try to shut the valves again, okay. or to try to maybe stop the stop the system from flushing everything out and maybe stop the contamination from happening. Yeah, yeah, so you can do that. Okay. Um, so go ahead and uh, it's it'll be an intellect roll. Uh, I'll say it's going to be a difficulty three. Okay, I have science and knowledge that I'm okay. trained in. And so, so you can reduce it to a two. Okay. Oh man, do I do an effort? How important is it? Is it to save the this city? Is an, this is an intellect. How important is it to save the city? <laughs> All of Tokyo. Um, so I spend. I have. This is an intellect roll, so I have edge and intellect. So I spend two intellect to apply an effort. Yes. Right. Yeah. I feel like I. I have seventeen. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I think you've got That's enough. That's my one stat. Okay, so I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna apply effort to this to make the difficulty. So it was a three. So two. now it's a two. It's a one now. It's a one now. Excellent. Yeah, because you were trained, it reduced it to a two, and okay. then you used and then two. I got it. Got it. I rolled a seventeen. You were only like fire. Right I now. know. Uh, yeah, you are able to get into the system. You see, um, Mr. Genocide, who has fallen to the ground, uh, kind of looking up, uh, smiling as he sees Accelerado kind of reeling there. Uh, then sees you hitting some buttons and then pulling one of the levers on the side and the whole thing kind of uh, the water underneath uh, in, that's broiling in these containment vats kind of and it calms down and he looks up and sort of hissing and says no we're in control now in your second action I want to go to Accelerando because Damn it, Al! I'm a doctor! <laughs> and that's my nickname for him now, is Al. Um, and I don't really have any abilities. I just want to see if I can tell maybe how... Oh, it feels like poison. Maybe like how quickly the poison is progressing or if there's anything we can do to slow that progression okay. or if maybe his metabolism is just so incredibly fast that he's just gonna burn it all up and be fine i don't know i don't know how his powers work uh yeah i'll say you can make a uh you can do you have a medicine intellect ability or something like that or healing ability other than just like the normal healing. i am good at getting hunches about people around me okay uh no, I don't have medicine. Or anything All right, like it's going to be an intellect check. Well, I have science. Okay. I'm a, I am a doctor. Sure, sure. I'll allow science to work. It is going to awesome. be a difficulty seven check. Um, reduced to a uh, difficulty seven, reduced to a six because you are trained. You want to buy any effort or? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. reduce it to a five. Use my so bread. Oh gosh, I'm really spending points here. Oh man, this is where I'm gonna start rolling bad. Eighteen. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Uh, you actually you tap. You begin to focus and concentrate uh, using your psychic abilities to reroute his, like, reprogram his nervous system almost. And in that moment, you're able to sort of send a telepathic command to his body uh, to neutralize this venom, understanding the, the construct of it, having uh, the body itself sort of fight against it. Uh, and you're able to stop the progress of this poison uh, through your telepathic abilities and understanding of this uh, of this effect. All right. There's only one thing we say to death. <laughs> that was very oh. tingly. <laughs> However, as the two of you are there, he looks up uh, at both of you and says, yeah. fine. Try this again later. 
And as he does, there's this like cloud of poison, which expands out and fills the entire control booth, sort of spilling over almost. Uh, I need the two of you to make a uh, a might defense roll. I don't suppose I can do that sort of flash thing where I zoom my arms around and blow it away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a wind be- turbine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if I have anything I that would let me do that. I don't think you're still reeling from the poison right now a little bit. Are you trained uh, in windmills? Are you trained in windmills? <laughs> uh, it'll be a level seven my defense defense role. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. I rolled a seven. <laughs> Close enough. I got a 13. That did not. <laughs> All right, so as it uh, fills the air, you both take seven points of speed damage, ignoring armor. Okay. My speed's at zero. Okay, what? that's fine. So you're you're impaired now. My Ow. speed is now my lowest attribute, but I still have speed. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you are impaired right now, uh, Sarah Bellix, which means that uh, effort costs are additional and uh, rolls of 17 are up on the deal uh, one damage. Uh, okay. You have minor major effects right now. It's on the sheet. Uh, but uh, you also both immediately uh, like sort of reel over coughing and you are both helpless for the next round. Um and as you do that, you see uh, Mr. Genocide standing up and beginning to rush towards the exit and out of the room. Um, no, so. I, I think we're too helpless, Steve, and my <laughs> communicators. At this point, you're just coughing and reeling from the poison. Uh, Remember like an hour and a half ago when we were like, no, we don't leave our comms open all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You can change that later if you want. Uh, that'll be... Uh, Machina, or no, it'll be the the war droids turns. Um, one of the war droid uh, war droids is going to attack you, Machina. Uh, so it's going to be a speed defense roll. Mm-hmm. I roll the five. Okay, so you take uh, eight, uh, reduced to four, and might damage. Yep. And. Uh, the other one is instead going to make an attack against uh, Sentinel, who's going to roll a speed defense. Does not succeed, so he takes seven points of my damage. Does he have any armor? Uh, he has one, so it was eight reduced to seven. Um, as he is like blasted by the laser and spins in place, uh, barely holding on to his gun. All right, uh, Machna, your turn. Uh, I'm gonna punch it again. Okay. Uh, I am spending from the might pool again to re- so I've reduced the difficulty by a total of two again. Okay, so it's a four. And punch it. I rolled an eight. So that is not enough. Uh, you go to swing at the robot, at the war droid, and it holds up its arms in defense and kind of <laughs> takes the blow. Um, once again, squaring off against you. Uh, Griffin is then going to take his shot at the one he, he shot before, uh, which is going to hit. 18 points of damage. And this one is just sh- like straight through the central sort of eye camera there. You just uh, blast out the back. You see spark and the whole thing. Uh, as he's Griffin's lying on the ground, reeling uh, heavy burns down the side of his body. All right. One of the war drawers down. Uh, back to Accelerando and Cerebellix. You both spend this round coughing and reeling, unable to do anything. You hear the sounds of Mr. Genocide as his footsteps sort of diminish down the hallway. Um, and that'll put it to uh, 
to the war droid's turn. The last war droid is going to uh, just swing back at you, Machina. I need you to make a uh, speed defense. Uh, rolling uh, sixteen. Hey, that's it. Are you? Did you expend? I didn't effort? expend any. Okay, so that's that's not enough to be at this uh, then. Um, so you take another four points of might damage. Okay, uh, my might pool is now at zero. Okay, so you're now impaired and sort of dragging a bit. <sighs> okay. Uh, it's to me now then? Yes. I am going to keep trying to punch it. All right. <laughs> no. Oh, poor Machina. Uh, you... Why does roll 28 me? I don't know. I feel bad. <laughs> you, uh, uh, you swing again. You're sort of, you feel your power cells being diminished as you're, as you're trying to beat down this, this war droid, which seems to just have a little bit more stamina. Um, that'll put it on, uh, see, Sentinel is, he's going to try to help you. He's going to take his shot at the war droid. And of course, I roll a 19. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know how I roll so well. Uh, he takes he takes shot. Machina, you swing with a wide haymaker. The um, droid ducks underneath you. And just as it does, he takes that kind of, you see that camera down the barrel, uh, the, the chamber clicking the bullet kind of whoosh, uh, straight uh, out, kind of the explosion of fire underneath it, slow motion through the air, hits the, the eye camera of this one, then whoosh, explodes out the back of the war droid's head. The, the thing again kind of whoosh, 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 uh, beginning to collapse. Uh, it's at this point, Machina, that you look up and you can see this kind of cloud of poison that's pouring out of the, uh, the console or the chamber above you. And uh, Cerebellix and Accelerando, it is your turn. Assuming that Accelerando is about to run out of the room, I just will take my whip and just wrap it around his arm and hope he'll just <laughs> pull me with him. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, get us up quickly on the communicator. New team policy, keep these open. Genocide's getting away. <laughs> okay. Um, and then let's see what I will... Yeah, what I will attempt to do is I have this running speed thing. So, you know, most people can normally move immediate. I can always move short. As an action, I can move a long distance. Um, here, I'll just put it into chat. Uh, as an action, you can move a long distance or up to 200 feet as a speed-based task with a difficulty of four. Okay. Um, but then with my power shifts, that should bring it down to a one okay and you're not impaired yet no not yet okay uh so make your roll yep and i'm using this fancy action thing so i may have put this in wrong but i put in three roll effort for the power shifts which hopefully will math right but so okay um yeah and then i'm just oh and i'm also specialized in running so <laughs> that's a natural one <laughs> It says success. Uh, <laughs> but I get a free intrusion. But look at all those minuses. So you win, <laughs> but you don't. Yeah. Okay, so as you're rushing across the uh, the wall, the catwalk here, uh, after Genocide, who you can see right in the corner, you know you can catch up to him. You look down and you see uh, uh, the last war droid take the bullet through its head and collapse onto the um, onto the side of this water tank here, and then you hear this noise emanating from this. And the war droid explodes just in the air. Uh, ex surrounding uh, Machina, uh, engulfing the walkway, which then reels and breaks underneath you, the whole thing collapsing to the ground. Um, 
that uh, Machina, you take, because uh, you're the only one within immediate range of it, uh, you take eight points of damage uh, from the explosion. Uh, so so it goes to your be... speed. Okay. Is, is your speed still positive or is it at zero? My speed is still positive. Good. Uh, so you're still up, but you this the shrapnel of this thing around you um, is sort of blurring your vision, and you hear a spoosh, spoosh, as both uh, Accelerando and uh, Cerebellix, you both fall uh, into the uh, vat of water underneath. That luckily isn't moving or anything anymore. It breaks your ball. Oh, well, that didn't work out as planned. <laughs> Um, and I think that's everything I can do this turn. Okay. Sarah Bellix? Uh, can I hover out of the water? <laughs> you can't hover out of the water. <laughs> I will click my boots or whatever. I don't really know what makes them hover. They kind of sputter for most I of guess. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Can <laughs> you lift out of the... Hover out of the, the water. Um and just try to assess what's going on. Um, I will, no, 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 I have my goggles on. Um, I will try to scan the intermediate area around us and see if genocide is anywhere to be found. Okay. And also if all my teammates are alive. <laughs> okay. So you spend the points to scan and, uh, Scanning around you, seems like all your teammates are alive. Some of them are pretty badly hurt. Uh, Machina looks like he's taking a lot of hits, um, but has been able to succeed in keeping you guys alive, not getting wailed on by those droids. Uh, you scan up, and you don't see um, you don't see genocide, but you do hear a sound of. Uh, of a what sounds like a helicopter about to take off. Then I will, I guess, come over the communicator and just say, they're starting the helicopter. He's getting away. So. I don't think I can do anything else. This is the first turn, I only have one action. Yeah. Unless... Uh, I, I'm pretty certain my only viable way of getting up there would be to jump through the building <laughs> at this point. You must certainly try. I... Well, I don't want to try. Uh, I'm going to be slightly selfish here. I, I want to try and slightly dismantle these droids so I can get one of their laser arm weapons. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you see, uh, that's going to take you a little bit of time. Um, so you see Machina kind of look up, look down, down towards the robots, and then just start going towards the robots to salvage for parts. Uh, I do point out that me attempting to catch it would result in significant damage to the building. before getting to work. Hmm. Okay. Uh, anybody else going to try to do anything? Are we still in initiative or? Kind of loosely. Um, if you guys act, then they'll act. Yeah, I mean, if I can get out of the pool and, um, you know, as I said, it's, all, it's fine since we already did it, but I think technically with my power shifts and specialization in running, I wouldn't need to roll on that kind of movement it's, it's a situation i think it's in like an optional like you can gotcha. you can forego rolling you can also roll for the chance to get the the natural 20 and stuff um, yep. so i think typically for the fun of it i just have you guys roll anyway just to see if you get the, if, yep. if you um well would i be able to get up to the roof in 200 feet you might be able to are we still attached I still attach to him. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I water ski behind him. All right. All right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess unless I get another one, this will succeed. Yeah. 
Um, what are the odds? <laughs> How? How? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You can spend a. You can spend an XP to roll again. Um. <laughs> For everyone watching at home, Alex just rolled another one. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Oh, which is which is better for the story? <laughs> Ooh. Think about it. We have a recurring villain now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. We did uh, save the city. Uh, yeah. I think. Uh, for now. Um. Yeah, I'll go ahead and. Um. <laughs> I'll just take the other intrusion. Oh, and I didn't divvy up the XP from the last one. So from the last one and this one. Oh no, you don't oh, get no, XP for the, the one, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys roll ones, I get. Oh to well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm still recovering from the poison. <laughs> so as as you begin to try to run up, uh, kind of, you get about ten feet away from the pool and just begin reeling from from the poison. Just you see Excel Ronda sort of almost pass out at that point. And you realize how badly off you guys are after having taken on some significantly dangerous enemies. Um, <laughs> and at which point, uh, kind of as you're salvaging, uh, <laughs> Machina and the rest of you are kind of realizing you're probably not going to be able to catch up. We see, uh, Mr. Genocide taking off in the helicopter, uh, with a few of his henchmen and kind of careening over the city, cursing the heroes that were able to thwart his actions, though he was able to escape, um, Let's see. Machina. Mm -hmm. You're able to... Uh, I have, uh, just so you're informed, I do have training in basically anything to do with playing with machines. Yeah. But you guys are able to um, salvage a couple of things from this. We'll talk about the laser arm. Uh, but you're able to salvage a couple of, like, objects from the... Um, from the bodies, these heavily advanced uh, machinery uh, that perhaps could be used as uh, as ciphers. Uh, so you guys do gain uh, three ciphers through the use of this. Assuming we kind of skip forward, and you guys have tinkered with them and used them for your own your own purposes. Um, and normally we'd have like an identifying thing, but I, you know, it's it's a pretty easy check, and I'm honestly just gonna let you guys have them uh but you guys gain a uh able to construct a force cube from one of them um which creates an immobile cube composed of six planes of solid force for one hour um there's also a memory switch and which lets you daze the number of enemies in a certain area, blah, 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 mechanics, and a reality spike, um, which uh, when activated, uh, it cannot move. It's like a like an immovable rod, essentially. Um, like stuck in the air, cannot be moved, except if you use like a might action to dislodge it. I'll give you guys those stuff, that stuff you guys can divvy them up and use them in the next session as we come to the close with all of you guys emerging emerging from the building to the growing sort of sounds of ambulances and emergency personnel coming from outside the uh, hovercraft with the wonder insignias lowering down and a few uh, darkly clad um, agents in suits coming out to uh, assist in the cleanup and maintenance of all of this nonsense here and that's where we will go ahead and conclude for today uh well done everyone that was a cluster that was awesome <laughs> that was yeah man that that was really cool the the two natural ones in a row yeah i uh i couldn't have hoped for a better narrative ending <laughs> Yeah. I was certain you guys were going to catch him. Somebody had to be the nega me. <laughs> yeah. I rolled like fire. Yeah. yeah at least you got to have fun with John's rolls. My rolls were just mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk more. Um, uh, 
we'll do all the character stuff and we'll be um for for those of you that are tuning in thank you for watching uh we will be back in a we're going to be playing this once a month on the second tuesday of uh, each month, which I believe will put our next game for the 12th of September, um, I do believe. So we will be backing out on that. We're going to do this once a month for now. We'll see how things go. We might pick up some more depending on some availability and uh, interest from everyone. Uh, but thank you for coming out. If you have any questions about the Cypher system or anything like that, send it to us on Twitter. Um, I gladly pretend like I know how to play this game um, <laughs> and we'll keep getting better at it as we go. But thank you guys for playing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've never run anything like this before, so it was a lot of fun. Um, and other thanks, uh, Sarah uh, from Survivor's Complex. Uh, she made our overlay. Uh, thank you to Incomptech for the royalty free music which we use for all our games um and thank you to savannah for running all the technical issues and and all that stuff for us and am i missing anybody else, Anything else? No. you can now subscribe to yeah. Big gaming subscribe. on the twitch twitch yeah subscribe and get an awesome emote <laughs> and stuff yeah you should definitely do that. Uh, and we will also have this up on YouTube at some point. Yes. So if anybody wants to watch this again and watch us watch that ending again. It was amazing. Uh, otherwise, I don't know if there's anything else planned for this week. I know that Saturday you know, Survivor's Complex. We'll be back with another episode of Survivor's Complex. So check us and... out then. Valandor will have another game two weeks Soon. from from Monday. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and in the meantime, right. follow us on Twitter at UPickGaming, here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash UPickGaming, and on YouTube, where you can subscribe and see all of our awesome D&D &D and video game streams and Paranoia which we play sometimes and now the cypher system and hopefully yeah. more stuff to come soon. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, but thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll see you back here in a month. Uh, until then stay wonderful. <laughs> How long were you waiting for that? <laughs> Forever. Goodbye internet. <laughs>